So welcome back, guys. So in this part, we'll get into uh, anti-inflammatory medications and a few others. So um, with, again, you know, inflammation in the lungs, we're thinking of those mast cells. Um, so, you know, glucocorticoids, if you remember our little figure here, if we kind of stimulate those, that's going to stimulate and facilitate that cyclic AMP, which will you know, have all those downstream effects of decreasing spasm, decreasing edema, um, you know, decreasing inflammation, basically. Again, our glucocorticoids, again, um, are anti-inflammatories. You know, if we have an anti-inflammatory effect in the lungs, it's going to, you know, inhibit all those uh, inflammatory products, or cytokines, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, which will decrease vascular permeability, which will decrease congestion in the lungs, will decrease the, you know, the migration of neutrophils and monocytes, which also lead to edema and some of the secretion buildup. Um, and it may also increase or enhance the effect of beta agonists. That's why you might often see someone, especially with asthmatics, given a um, steroid with a beta agonist, right? They have this kind of double effect or an um, uh, enhancing effect. So again, anti-inflammatories, glucocorticoids, you know, inhaled, used often for long-term maintenance in asthma, budenicide or pulmocort, again, cort, think corticosteroids, beclomethazone or beclovent you might see, um, flucatazone. So again, our suffix for this um, is often sown, so if you remember a sone, think of glucocorticoids um, or cortisone. That's kind of, if you think the family of medications, think cortisone. Um, that is the, uh, again, the suffix sone. Um, oral, you might see used with acute infections. So someone's maybe got a pneumonia or an exacerbation of COPD. Um, you know, those may be given uh, the patient sometimes prophylactically, even prior, uh, just to have them on hand. Uh, not to take them, but if they start getting symptoms, to take a, a prednisone and an antibiotic prophylactically to prevent them from getting hospitalized. Uh, so you might see that with some patients. You may have a prescription for prednisone, but they're not actively taking it. Uh, but again, prednisone is often used for acute infections or respiratory congestion, uh, again, to you know, kind of clear out the airways. Uh, and prednisone, again, looking for that sone is a dead giveaway that it's a glucocorticoid, anti-inflammatory. Uh, prednisone also has other effects too. You can, you know, you can use it for a lot of other uh, issues, but it can be used again for you know, the, the pulmonary effects. Um, you might see IV um, used in patients with very severe uh, respiratory compromise, like status asthmaticus or someone with sepsis or you know, really serious respiratory distress um, syndrome. You know, the ARDS. Uh, so methylprednisone or Medrol, um, again, looking for that, you know, sone or our own. Again, that's a dead giveaway that it's an anti-inflammatory glucocorticoid uh, family. Uh, side effects, hyperglycemia, you know, glucocorticoids, kind of acting on our cortisol receptors, so the same effects as cortisone in the body. Um, so hyperglycemia, it's going to spike, um, you know, uh, glucose. Uh, we might see hypertension from a uh, you know, higher um, you know, our changes in blood volume as well as the hyperglycemia. Uh, osteoporosis, again, remembering like kind of what cortisone does. It's catabolic, so it's going to break things down. It may break down bone with long-term use. Uh, myopathy, same thing as well. Like it's catabolic, it may break down uh, tendon um, and muscle, especially with long-term use and mood swings. Uh, this is more particular with your uh, uh, medrol, methylprednisone, uh, which is a very potent, 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 um, uh, uh, glucocorticoid. Uh, I have colleagues of mine who were uh, nurses that they, they've said like, yeah, the I've, it was like watching someone, you know, and like when it was 28 days later, like kind of a zombie kind of thing. They were just kind of you know, a little crazy. Um, very, very uh, labile mood swings. The um, effects of lower, lower dose, lower, um, lower grade um, Glucocorticoids typically for most people is a perk. It's an upper because their you know, blood sugars perk. Um, it may be variable. I actually don't get the perk when I take them. I get a little bit, you know, a little bit actually sleepy. Uh, so it's going to be different for everybody. Uh, but you may see different, you know, moods and emotions with having these glucocorticoid, uh, glucocorticoids taken. Um, typically going to be less side effects again with an inhaled delivery versus a PO medication. And again, this is just a review here of the effects. So again, if we have those, you know, if we're we block you know, inf inflammation. We're going to act on all these different leukocytes, um, which will you know, decrease you know, uh, 
um, mucus production, so decreased mucus secretion, call, you know, enhance the effects of um, you know, beta-2 stimulation, decrease cytokines, which will relax our airway and smooth muscles, decrease um, you know, that separation of the endothelial cells, both in the vasculature and in the lungs, so decrease can, can kind of congestion in the lungs, as well as you know, decreasing the, the, the kind of the binding of the cytokines, the decrease the, the, you know, the, inf the inflammatory signaling by the leukocytes. So uh, you may see these given in combination with other medications. So, um, you know, you might see again, like I mentioned, uh, glucocorticoids and beta agonists kind of work nicely in harmony. Um, so Advair is a medication you might see patients given. It's often given as a DPI, a dry powdered inhaler. Again, it's not the same thing as a meter dose. Again, they, they breathe in really, really abruptly from the beginning. Um, so it's a steroid and a LABA. Um, again, a long acting beta agonist. And the advantage of this, again, you take one puff twice per day. Okay. Um, so once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and they're good usually all day. Uh, so Symbacort is one you might see, Bidenicide and Formeterol. Again, alls, again, thinking anything with a beta agonist, a beta 2 agonist. And then um, Vilocatazone, again, Sone, and again, another all meter or all or Cerevan, Advair, uh, probably one of the more common ones you might see, again, which is more, it's a DPI. It's not a meter dose inhaler. It doesn't have a propellant. You have to draw it in from a very vigorous breath in. Uh, Leukotriene inhibitors, you might see um, given for patients with asthma. These are a slam dunk for asthma because then we talked about in path, pathophysiology. Uh, leukotrienes are the kind of the you know, mediator uh, for a lot of the uh, airway hyper responsiveness and inflammation that occurs in patients with asthma. So if we block the effects of those leukotrienes, uh, we decrease the secretions, decrease the smooth muscle hypertrophy and vaso, um, or the vaso, um, or bronco, bronchodilation, um, or bronchoconstriction um, and vasodilation from the inflammation. Uh, so they're really great for clearing mucus, really great, great for keeping the airways open um, and decreasing the congestion in patients with asthma. Uh, they're de delivered typically in a pill form, um, and they may also en enhance the effects of glucocorticoids. Um, so you might see this as well given in patients um, with, you know, with asthma to get a little bit of a gl glucocorticoid as well as an, a leukotriene inhibitor because um, they have these enhancing effects. So you may often see these prescribed together for, for chronic use. Uh, not always, but you know, pretty often. And then uh, we'll talk about idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So most of the medications we had talked about were really for um, our obstructive uh, defects, um, you know, asthma, COPD, stuff like that. Uh, for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, there really isn't a lot out there or available for these patients, unfortunately. Um, so for those, you know, you know, we often would just give patients symptomatic care or things set to treat secondary complications. So oxygen to maintain, you know, oxygenation, kind of offload the pulmonary vasculature a bit by keeping them dilated. Um, and then some steroids, maybe like this glucocorticoids, uh, maybe decrease inflammation, but idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is not an inflammatory mediated condition. So it didn't really help much. However, and it's the kind of the cool thing is, since I've been teaching this course, um, these medications have come onto the scene. So there are these new anti-fibrotic medications, uh, perethrone, um, and uh, nintinib, or OFEB, or an Acibret, um, received FDA, FDA approval. And I, I believe now there's multiple sites looking at testing this in, um, in patients. Uh, the great thing is that it, it's, while it may not, it's not going to stop the medication, right? It's not going to reverse it. Uh, it might slow down the progression of IPF, giving them more years. And again, this was, and again, for, for many years, there were no medications. Uh, it was This wasn't even a, an option. Um, so the fact that these exist is very, very exciting and very promising uh, for patients with, with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So again, um, they have these anti-fibrotic medications. Um, they suppress fibroblast proliferation, reduce fibrogenic mediator production. So it, it slows down the, the fibrogenic um, you know, processes occurring with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, and again, you, you may see this being used in a few centers if they're a site. Um, they're very, very new medications and they're very, very promising. So uh, with that, that kind of covers our um, prescribed medications. Uh, next, we'll get into some over-the-counter medications you might uh, actually be pretty familiar with.